Hello and welcome to Three-Legged Dog Yoga. I am Lindsay and if you are new here, thanks for checking us out. Uh, today's class is going to be for beginners. So we're going to go over a few of the pretty basic poses, um, the ones you'll see over and over and over again in yoga classes. I will give you lots of cues for them and a nice introduction to some of those poses as well as some of the movements, some of the flows we do uh, in yoga. So if you are new, if you're brand new to yoga, always listen to your body. So if you have any aches or pains, any pinching, anything that feels wrong, stop, come out of the pose. Um, also, if you are ever tired in a yoga class, there is child's pose that's available for you. You just come down to it and we'll be starting there. So I'll show you what it is. Um, so you won't need any props or anything, just yourself, some comfy clothes, doesn't matter what you're wearing and hopefully a yoga mat, but this could be done on carpet too. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So the very first thing we're going to do is come into child's pose. So we'll start at the backs of our mats. We're going to draw our hips to our heels. And you have two main options here. So you can come here and then we can reach forward, bringing our hands out in front and dropping our chest to our thighs and then dropping our forehead. Or you have the option to bring the legs wider. So bringing the knees out nice and wide and then walking the hands down, dropping the belly. So it's up to you. Depends on the type of body you're in and all sorts of other things on what would be more comfortable for you. Depends on how your bones react, how your muscles react. So just find whatever feels good for you and we'll just start here. So reaching those hands nice and far ahead of you, spreading through the fingers. <sighs> Taking a few deep breaths. I'm just starting to turn inwards. And we really do emphasize in yoga to listen to your body because only you know you. I can be here to guide you and to help you get into the postures, but it is you that has to listen to your body to know what feels good and what doesn't. And that intuition, self-awareness will keep us safe in this practice. So wherever you are with the legs, let's just start crawling the hands to the right hand side, just bringing a little bit of a stretch to our left side body. So again, doesn't matter how far you go into these postures, just go until you feel something. So this you should be feeling underneath the left arm, all down the left side body. And then checking in with the left hip, making sure it's not creeping up. So it's staying nice and glued to our heels. If it's creeping up, just come out of the posture a little bit. Just enjoying that breath, not controlling it, just being in tune with it. And then we'll slowly start walking our hands back through center and then over to the left side. Dropping the forehead down, reaching out with that right arm again, feeling the stretch all down the right side of the body and then pressing that right hip down to the floor. So we're drawing the right hip and the right hand away from each other here. Hmm. And then slowly crawling our hands back through center. We'll press through our hands, lift off of the heels. Bring the knees underneath the hips, so hips with hips width. Tuck the toes and then bring our hands underneath our shoulders. So this is for tabletop here. So we're setting up for our cat cow, which we will see quite often in yoga classes because it's a wonderful warm up for the back. <sighs> so on the inhale here, we drop the belly down, roll the shoulders back and look up. And on the exhale, you draw that belly into the spine first and then round it all out. And then inhale, we drop the belly down, roll the shoulders back, look up. Exhale, draw that navel to the spine, round the whole back out. Press through those shoulders. And we'll just do two more like that. So inhale, nice slow movements here. And exhale, draw the belly to the spine. Press through the shoulders. 
Last one, inhale, drop that belly, arch the lower back, roll the shoulders up, back and look up. And then exhale, draw that belly to the spine, round out that upper back. Awesome, and then coming back to a neutral spine here. All right, let's come into our first downward facing dog. So let's walk our hands a little bit forward and then we're gonna send, going to send our hips to the sky. So our toes stay nice and tucked and we're just going to start sending our hips up to the sky. So don't worry about how straight the legs are here. What we wanna pay attention to you is drawing that belly towards the thighs. So we're not rounding our backs here. We're keeping a nice flat back, straight back. We're reaching from the tailbone all the way out through the head in one straight line here. That is the goal. And then once we get there, we can play with pedaling out the feet and seeing if those legs get a little bit straighter. But don't worry too much about that today. Let's just really focus on kind of the top part of the body. But we're making a nice inverted letter V. We're pressing through our fingers. There's a little space underneath the palms of our hands because our fingers are staying nice and gripped into the mat. Pressing out through the shoulders. Our arms are rotating externally. So to the outside, reaching away with our shoulders. And then our hips are shooting up towards the sky. Nice gentle bend in the knees. And then the heels are reaching towards the floor. Awesome, and then let's bring it down. Drop the knees down and we'll come into child's pose. <sighs> so as stated before, if you're ever tired in class, this is always available for you. And it's nice to pause sometimes. Hmm. I'm gonna stay one more breath here. And then gently look forward, press through the hands. We'll send the hips back up for downward facing dog. And we're not going to stay here for long. Let's shift the weight into that left foot and then we'll take a big step up in between our hands and then we'll pivot our left foot down to the floor at about 45 degrees and inhale press through those feet and we come all the way up for our warrior one so we want to check in with the hips make sure they're nice and square both of our hips are facing forward here and as we face our hips forward we're reaching with that left heel trying to press it down to the floor again it doesn't matter if it doesn't reach all the way to the floor. That is not necessarily important today. And then our front knee is tracking over our ankle. We can see our big toe still. So our knee isn't flailing out to the side and it's not falling inwards. So we like to be able to keep an eye on our big toe. And then we can add the arms. We inhale, lift them up to the sky. And then exhale, relax the shoulders down. So we're keeping our shoulders away from our ears. And then the gaze is nice and neutral. If you get tired, you're welcome to straighten that front leg and then come back into it. And then release the hands. We'll just gently step to the tops of our mats here. Awesome, nothing fancy to get through for now. Great, so we'll switch sides. So let's shift the weight into that left foot. We'll take a step back with the right, keeping that back foot at about 45 degree, 45 degree angle. Bend into that left foot, left knee rather. You can check in with that toe, hips, rotate forward. And then we inhale the arms up. <sighs> Exhale, relax the shoulders. Awesome. Coming into warrior one on the opposite side. <sighs> and then exhale, hands come down to the side. We'll just step once again to the tops of our mats. Awesome. <sighs> so let's take a pause in Tadasana in Mountain Pose. So our hips, our feet underneath our hips, shoulders roll open, palms are facing forward, a little micro bend in those knees. And we're reaching up nice and tall with a crown with the top of the head. <sighs> Always check in with your pelvic bone. If you have an anterior or a pelvic, posterior pelvic tilt. We want to keep the bowl 
nice and flat. So pretend you have, you have any liquid and your pelvic bone is a bowl, you have any liquid in it. So if you're too far forward, it's gonna spill out front. If you're too far backwards, it's gonna spill at the back. So you wanna keep it nice and neutral. So sometimes you'll hear, tuck the tailbone. That's not always a great cue if you have an anterior, sorry, a posterior pelvic tilt, but you just need to get to know your own pelvic bone. So the idea is you keep that pelvic bone nice and neutral, which engages, in turn engages the core. So finding that nice, Powerful mountain pose here. And then we'll move on. So once again, let's take a step back, this time with the right foot. We're gonna keep the right foot parallel with the short edge of the mat, coming into our warrior two. And then we'll heel toe the front foot, so the heel of the front foot is in line with the middle of the back. And then we bend into that front knee and inhale those arms out nice and wide. So here our hips are not both pointing forward, one is pointing out to the side. Well, there are headlights are kind of going this way, let's just say. They're as whereas warrior one, our hips are square and facing forward. So let's inhale those arms out nice and wide, reach out with those fingers. Our shoulders roll up and back, keeping a nice tall spine. And then we take our gaze over that front middle finger. And we focus our drishti, our focus there. Again, checking in with that front knee, just taking a peek down, making sure that left knee isn't creeping in, staying nice and square over the left ankle. And then let's exhale those hands down and take a step up to the top of our mats. <sighs> Shake it all out and we'll switch sides. So let's take a big step back with the left foot. Left, out her left foot is in line with the short edge of the mat. The right heel is in line with the middle, the arch of the right foot, of the left foot, sorry. And then we inhale our arms out nice and wide. Once again, checking in with that big toe, making sure you can see it. So our front knee is staying nice and even over the heel, over the ankle. Shoulders roll up and back. And we reach out with those arms, keeping the gaze now on the right middle finger. And we'll stay one more big breath here. Our inner thighs are really squeezing in, really giving us lots of strength in this posture. And then we'll exhale, step to the top of the mat. Awesome. Okay, so let's go through some half sun salutations. This is the beginning of a full sun salutation. So our feet are nice and square underneath our hips. Roll the shoulders up and back, standing up nice and tall. We inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Gaze comes up, exhale, bend into those knees as we reach our bellies to our thighs and we fold forward. Press the, <laughs> press the hands to the shins, inhale to a flat back, and then exhale, we fold forward. <sighs> Big inhale, draw the arms out nice and wide. Bring the palms to touch overhead and exhale, hands through heart center. Awesome, we'll do that a few more times. So take a big inhale, arms come wide and overhead. Exhale, bend through those knees, dive forward. Press into the shins as we inhale to halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. And inhale, press through those feet, reach nice and wide all the way up. Look up and then exhale, hands through heart center. Awesome, let's do one more like that. Big inhale, arms come up. Exhale, bend through the knees, reach the belly to the thighs as we fold forward. Inhale, press the hands to the shins for a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. And then big inhale brings us all the way back up. Exhale, hands through heart center. Awesome. Wonderful. Great, so let's come down to our seats. So we're not gonna do anything fancy to get there. We are just going to sit down. <laughs> so let's bring the soles of the, sorry, the sole of the left foot in to meet the right inner thigh. You've probably done this stretch at some point in your life. I feel like a lot of us have, but if you haven't, keeping the hips nice and square, they're facing forward. <clears throat> and then we inhale. 
sit up nice and tall. The crown of the head is reaching up. And then as we exhale, we slowly fold forward. So keeping a nice generous bend in that front knee, we're reaching our belly towards our thighs, our chest to our shins. So it's not important if that chest ever reaches the shin. What's important here is we're not rounding into this and just placing our foreheads on our knees with a round back. So there's a big difference between this and then reaching forward with your, with your belly. So just come into this wherever it feels good. It might, might be quite high up for now, that's totally fine. If you're in a more flexible body, that's also great, but just make sure you are drawing that belly towards the thigh. So we're always reaching forward with the chest and the belly here. And this just prevents, prevents us from rounding our backs. And then press through the hands, come back up, and we'll switch sides. <sighs> so reach that left foot <laughs> ahead of you, out nice and straight. The right sole of the foot comes to the inner left thigh, sitting up nice and tall, and then we just crawl our fingers forward to wherever we start feeling this in the hamstring, keeping that nice generous bend in the knee, and then we reach forward with our bellies. Our chest is drawing forward as if someone's pulling our, pulling our entire upper bodies forward with like a string that's attached to the chest, let's say. Hmm. I'll just stay one more moment here. And then pressing through the hands, we'll walk all the way up through center. Awesome. So let's scooch our hips down, our butts down on our mats, keeping soles of the feet down. We'll just start rolling onto our backs. <sighs> Wonderful. Let's bring the right foot in a little bit closer. Inhale that left foot up and then we'll cross our left foot over our right, our right thigh. We want to make sure we're not sitting on our knees and we're not sitting right on our, or not engaging sorry, our knees with our ankles. We're just reaching that ankle a little bit further and just a little bit down from the knee. So we're keeping the joints nice and safe here. And for some, this might be perfect. And if it is, stay here. Hands can just come relax wherever you'd like. If you want to bring them out to the side, you're welcome to. Palms up or down, whatever works. And then if you don't feel anything here, you can just start inhaling that right leg up a little bit, drawing the knee, the right knee to the chest, and then maybe reaching for that thigh. So this might be a lot for some, this might be not a lot for others. So you just work with your body, whatever feels good. And we're trying to keep the lower back glued to the floor. So we're not just rolling our bodies up, coming into a ball. Again, it's that rounding of the back uh, motion there. We're reaching. Our, we're reaching our stomachs, our, our belly to our thigh. And then our sit bones, our sacrum is reaching down to the floor as well. And then we'll release this side, let that right foot fall, meet it with the left, and we'll switch sides. So left foot, and then right foot comes up. <sighs> Cross it over the left, again, keeping the ankle nice and safe and keeping the knee nice and safe. So just coming a little bit up on the shin and a little bit underneath the left knee. And then staying here if that's good, or just inhaling and gently bringing that left knee up towards you. <sighs> and reaching with that, reaching with those sit bones towards the floor. I'm trying to also keep the shoulders from rounding up. They can come up a little bit, that's fine, just so long as they're not, we're not coming into a ball, so to speak. Giving a nice flat back. And then on the exhale, we'll release that left foot down, find the right one to meet it, awesome. And lastly, we'll come into a twist. So what we're going to do here is keep the legs as they are. We're going to shift our hips over to the left side, and then we're just going to drop our knees to the right side. So wherever they fall, if you need a little bit extra, you can always place your right arm underneath those knees, or you can kind of um, prop it up, whatever feels good. The idea is that the knees fall. They don't need to fall um, directly to the floor. And here, the idea here is we want to start reaching that left shoulder towards the floor. So instead of rolling over with our entire bodies, we have our nice 
our arm nice and wide, our left hand comes nice and wide, and then we reach to the floor with that shoulder. Right hand can come on top of the legs, it can be underneath, whatever works for you. And there's also a lot of movement you can, a lot of different um, spots you can have your knees here to make it easier or harder. So you just have to find the spot that feels good for you. The idea is that we keep the knees stacked, that's easier said than done for a lot of people, but that's where we're going. And then if you'd like to add on, you can always reach, you can always look, sorry, over that left hand with the head. This might be a lot for some, so if it is, just take it very easy. And if not, just keep the head up, facing towards the ceiling. And then we'll inhale those knees back through center and we'll switch sides. So same thing on the other side. Let's shift those hips to the right side. Take an inhale and draw those knees to the left. We'll reach out with that right arm and draw that right shoulder to the floor. Keeping the gaze either up or looking softly over that right middle finger, whatever works for you. And then keeping those, trying to keep those knees stacked on top of each other as much as possible. For some, this might mean you need to move the hips a little bit as well. So it's just a matter of finding that comfortable spot. Twists are always a little bit of a a little bit of a process to find what feels good. But just be patient and be gentle with your body. And don't overdo it. Just listen if it feels sore, if it feels bad. Then gently come out of it. But what we're really looking for here is reaching that right hip and the right shoulder away from each other. And then coming back through center, we'll just shift the hips back through neutral neutral <laughs> and we'll take an inhale we'll just bring the knees up at this point you're welcome to round into a little ball so this time we want that rounded back you can also leave the head on the floor and just round those knees up towards you maybe shuffling side to side just giving the lower back a little massage and then we'll just gently rock up to seated Hmm. And coming into cross-legged or whatever, whatever feels good here. If you have pillows, anything underneath your knees, that's also fine. Just listening to your body. All right, that is all for our beginner's practice today. I hope you learned a few things about how to safely get into these postures. Um, if you have any questions or anything you really, really want to learn about, then please don't be shy. Leave a comment and I will read them and get back to you. Um, and if you did like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, thank you so much. We'll see you next time.